Hi, welcome back. Thanks for joining me. First of all, I want to say a huge thank you to everybody who watches my videos. Whether you're subscribed or not, maybe you just happened across them. I just want to say a huge thanks. I'm fast approaching 500 subscribers, which is quite mind blowing for a 42 year old guy that just rides around in circles on mini ramps and in bowls. So I'm kind of astounded that people actually want to watch that, which is really cool. And thanks to everybody that likes and comments. It makes a huge difference to me and means an awful lot. And at least tells me that some people are actually enjoying it. So thanks very much. And as a quick reminder, if you are one of those people that enjoys what I'm doing, maybe you want to follow me on Instagram because you'll see a lot more clips much earlier than they appear on the channel here. I tend to put up clips of certain achievements the day they happen, whereas it takes a long time for them to actually appear in a video here. So uh, yeah, follow me along on Instagram if you are on Instagram and are interested. Now with that formality out of the way, let's get on to today's video. Now this place was a new one to me. I'd never been here before, but was recommended it by a friend who uh, took me along there. It's a mini ramp, but quite an unusual one. It's actually a spine with some extra bits bolted on. So there's a one platform on the one side and then there's like a box section on the other side with a hubber going down it. I don't really skate hubbers or boxes or anything, so I didn't really touch on those, but the bit most interesting for me was the spine because I haven't skated a spine ramp in an awful long time. You'll have seen in one of my most recent videos that I was trying to do some board slides on a spine in a concrete bowl. And that was pretty much all the spine action that I'd had in a long time. So this spine ramp, I thought, right, I'm going to go over the middle of it and just kind of get used to doing that. Something a bit different about this one as well. It had a tiny little platform part to the spine. So it wasn't just back to back coping or, or one strip of coping. Um, it was actually, you know, half a foot wide platform and no actual coping on that platform. It was like an angle iron type coping. So it's a spine, but with a tiny little flat section with angle iron as the coping. A little bit different. I don't think I've ever skated anything like that before. But strangely, it made it a little bit more interesting actually going over the spine because you had a, a flat surface to land on before you tipped over and went down the spine. So maybe it helped. But anyway, spines can be a bit intimidating, just getting over them, doing a rock fakie on them. You know, your, your wheels don't touch on a platform anymore. So you're doing a rock over the top and your wheels are going into kind of open space as your rails hit on the coping, which is a little bit weird if you're used to having your wheels actually touching on the platform before you rock back in. So going up and rocking and your board going completely flat and then tipping yourself over and doing like a rock into it again can be a little bit weird. And that kind of balance seesaw point messes with your head a little bit sometimes. But once you get doing a few of them, it starts to feel OK. The other way a lot of people go over spines is by doing like a, a blunt on them and then just dropping in. Uh, I didn't do that this time on these, but I have done that before on other spine ramps. And again, it's a little bit intimidating just getting the blunt and then tipping in again. Aside from that, the only other things to say really is that this ramp was very wide, which was cool, but it had one major drawback. And you'll see it quite apparently in the video once it gets started, scooter kids. They seem to have this real issue with waiting. You know, kids are impatient anyway, but they just don't seem to want to wait and take turns. They just want to go. And so after a while, it got to the point where it was a free for all and you just go and they go and invariably collisions are going to happen. And you'll see one textbook collision in this video where the kid just didn't look at all at what he was doing. All he was looking at was his friend who went in before him. He followed him in. I was coming out of a front side slash and just hit him head on. He just wasn't looking at anything but his friend, which is just so typical of scooter kids. So if you're a parent of a scooter kid, you know, this is textbook of what they get up to. And uh, aside from hanging their scooter wheels over the coping while somebody else is riding, dropping in on other people is just textbook. And, uh, you know, they really do need to learn some skate park etiquette. Anyway, that's enough moaning just to show you that the, the concept of taking turns doesn't seem to be taught in schools anymore. 
and with dire consequences, no doubt. Luckily for me, I'm always a lot bigger than them, so it's, it'll always be them that comes off worst. And it's not the first time that I've had a head-on collision with a kid, but I dare say it'll be us that gets the blame if there's any actual injury occurred. But anyway, let's move past that. The rest of the session, you know, me and some friends skating the mini ramp. Luckily, there's some friends that are much better than me, so there's much more interesting things to watch than just me trying to get over the spine or doing some 50-50s. Got some pretty good board slides in there as well, so, you know, it's not all bad. Anyway, let's get on with it. Hope you enjoy the video. Thanks for checking it out and thanks for subscribing, all of those people. It does mean an awful lot to me. Hope to see you again soon. Let's check out the video.